She's the first African American to be president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science, and she's the woman who could fire me at any moment. Please welcome Cheryl Bone Isaacs. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the fifth annual, sixth annual Governor's Awards, Scientific and Technical Awards. I got excited about working in the film business when I was pretty young. I had a brother who was working in the film business, and we would drive down to New York to see the big films open. One of the big and first for me was West Side Story. And I learned all the songs. So by the time we drove to New York to go to the screening, I mouthed every word. And it was just great. I started in the film business in 1977. It intimidated me, but I thought, you know what? You gotta go for it. There were still challenges, you know, being a woman, being a minority. I didn't let that get in my way. Tonight, we are here to celebrate storytellers. Your work on screen and off captivates and invigorates society. You challenge us to see each other and the world in different ways and meaningful ways. I hope for each of you, your Student Academy Award is the first step in a very long and successful career. We preserve the past, honor the present, and shape the future of this medium. Everyone in the Hollywood community has a role to play in bringing about the vital changes the industry needs so that we can accurately reflect the world today. I am confident that together we can shape a future of which all of us can be proud. We all wonder if we're smart enough, if we're good enough, if we're talented enough, if we're pretty enough, whatever the words are that we put up in front of ourselves, you got to work to get rid of that. And it's not easy. It's a constant struggle back and forth. But every time you come up against it, you've got to say, why not me? To the movie-going audience around the world, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the TIFF Industry Conference and to this mogul session with the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Cheryl Boone Isaacs. My name is Kathleen Drum, and I'm the Industry Director at TIFF. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsors and supporters who make everything that TIFF does possible. Our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and our major industry supporters, the Ontario Media Development Corporation and Telefilm Canada. I'd also like to honour the original keepers of the land which we know of today as Toronto by acknowledging the Mississaugas of New Credit, the Haudenosaunee and the Huron-Wendat. Thank you for hosting us here today and for hosting TIFF year round. After the recent Oscars So White controversy, Cheryl Boone Isaacs has led a deliberate strategy to open up Academy membership. In June, nearly 700 new members were announced in a lineup that embraced internationalism and diversity. Moreover, Ms. Boone Isaacs has stated publicly that she is committed to doubling the number of female and minority members who can vote for the Oscars. Leading us on a journey through Cheryl's career, her personal philosophy and her ambitious goals for diversity and inclusion, is Cameron Bailey, who was the artistic director of the Toronto International Film Festival. A passionate advocate for Toronto's own multicultural immigrant culture, he has a strong belief that films should not just deliver great performances, but tell stories that reflect who audiences really are. Cameron Bailey is responsible for the overall vision and execution of the festival. He has been programming for more than 20 years and as a former film critic and journalist has worked in radio, television and in print. Just before I, I welcome Cameron to the stage, one small housekeeping note please. No photography or video recording is allowed, however the good news is that we are live streaming this to our website and it will be up on our YouTube channel. 
Everybody, please join me in welcoming Cameron Bailey to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming to this conversation with Cheryl Boone Isaacs. We try to have the conversations that matter during the festival. We're all here to see films um, and sometimes to buy and sell films, but it's also important, I think, to understand the context within which we do that, and this is what we want to do this morning. Cheryl Boone Isaacs was recently re-elected for fourth term as president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. She represented the public relations branch uh, at the Academy as a governor for over 24 years. And in 2012, she produced the Academy's fourth annual Governor's Awards. She also heads CBI Enterprises, Inc., where she's consulted on marketing efforts on such films as The Call, The Artist, The King's Speech, Precious, Spider-Man 2, and Tupac Resurrection. So she's got range. Uh, she previously served as president of theatrical marketing for New Line Cinema, where she oversaw numerous box office successes, including Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, and Rush Hour. And before joining New Line, she was executive VP of worldwide publicity for Paramount Pictures, orchestrating the publicity campaigns for Best Picture winners Forrest Gump and Braveheart. She is also now, in addition to her duties at the Academy, an adjunct professor at Chapman University's Dodge College of Film and Media Arts. Please join me in welcoming Cheryl Boone Isaacs. Good morning, Cheryl. Welcome. Good morning. Um, good morning. I love the rain, you guys. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I do. Do you really? Yeah, because okay. we haven't had any in Southern California uh, in so long that it's, it's refreshing. We have a big concert on the street later this afternoon with I've asked for Pharrell, it to stop. so please, what yes. Time? It's around <laughs> 5.30, so uh, by then, so no rain. Thank you. We can ask for like 3 o'clock. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Wow, you get a lot of power as Academy president. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But we'll all do it together. <laughs> um, the Academy did become the epicenter of the conversation around diversity and inclusion over the past year. But obviously, there's a lot more to this than just the Academy Awards or the nominations. Um, what would you describe as the entire ecosystem when it comes to diversity in the movies? What else is in play besides just who gets nominated for Oscars? Well, it certainly is a process you Canadians say process, okay. <laughs> um, a process that, that begins you know, years, years, years. And also the, the, um, the structure of Hollywood, obviously. Um, the Academy Awards represents uh, the discussion and selection of our members, um, believing, um, I, I don't want to say the best work, but, um, but you know, viewing all of the movies and, um, and, and looking at them from a professional standpoint of, of the best and then, of course, um, the nominations come out. Before you, mm -hmm. even, you even get to which films are presented to right. Academy members, though, mm -hmm. there's also the writing, the green lighting, the, the production, all of that the process casting, matters. all those things. All those steps matter mm -hmm. uh, prior to um, the Academy or any, or any of the awards, truthfully, mm -hmm. all the award season before that process begins. Mm -hmm. you know, so much of the discussion of inclusion, um, and it's a great discussion, and I think that, uh, that this uh, door is open. I've said I've been in this business a long time, and the door has opened a number of times, but then it kind of closes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this time, the goal is not to have the door closed. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean from the very beginning um, with, um, with hiring practices and uh, promotion and mentoring, especially promotion, mm -hmm. and really pulling um, people along in the different skill sets that it takes to make a motion picture mm -hmm. and to be able to build a career. So there is a lot involved in this yeah. when we're talking about about inclusion, why do you think people focus so much on what gets nominated for Oscars? 
Well, I guess the good news for us is that the Oscars get so much attention. They matter. So, <laughs> so therefore, it's that, and, and it's a culmination of the award season. So the discussion of awards goes on for a few months. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it comes to what we, what I refer to as, anyway, our big night out, our big public night out. Mm -hmm. um, and we do get a sizable audience, which is wonderful, and we love the conversation mm -hmm. that people are talking about film. I mean, that's what's important, is talking about film. So because of that, I, I believe that every little thing that happens seems to be newsworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know that newsworthy element has been a big part of, um, of what you've gone through over the last several months. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, what the media has gotten right, if we can cast the media as kind of a, a, a single entity here, and what they have missed maybe in covering this story? Well, one thing that, that seems to keep popping up is a, um, a fascination with numbers. And that's, you know, we, we did set out and, and we are going to just charge forward with increasing our um, inclusion and diversity within our ranks as members, uh, as well as our governance. And uh, so we have labeled that our A2020 initiative um, so that each year we are looking at a progress in order to reach goals. Can you talk us through that a little bit in terms of what you're trying to reach by 2020? Um, we want to increase um, our member our uh, inclusion as uh, by fifty percent mm -hmm. if we can. Um, fifty percent so women, fifty percent people of color. How is that together? Down? Together, together. together. yes, okay. yes. Uh, uh, gender and race, uh -huh. and um, and it's a, it's a big goal that is for sure. But you have to set a big goal. If mm -hmm. you don't set a big goal, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. Do you know? And so each year, and certainly this last year, we brought in uh, six hundred and eighty three members. Um, our goal also is inclusion, um, that, that includes uh, international, because there are great filmmakers around the world. And, um, and we do and have for years had our foreign language um, committee as well as the best foreign language film. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we want to recognize the talent that is out there. And certainly, film around the world is really blossoming and, and really growing in many, many new, new countries, new territories, um, which is a wonderful thing. Um, I think a lot of us who attend film festivals were really excited to see some of the international candidates that you were proposing uh, for membership. Um, you know, Deepa Mehta here in Canada, um, who I think has had her, she's had a film nominated, of course, in the past, um, but I think of Pitchapong from Thailand and, and so many others who we think of as kind of very art house festival filmmakers, but they're a very important part of the global film landscape. That's right. It's great to see them included. That's right. A absolutely. And, um, and that's what we're about, is recognizing talent. Um, and also, uh, it, it was curious, and, and I've noticed this over a number of years, uh, that there are filmmakers that had no understanding of how to become an Academy member, what that process was. Mm -hmm. So we've spent quite a bit of time this year of A, explaining it, um, and encouraging our members, who I view as ambassadors for the organization, to look up about and around in their work environment and to, to make an absolute effort mm -hmm. to look for talent that has n is not currently a member mm -hmm. and explaining who we are, what we are, and encouraging them to become members, which is why we were able to get to such a high number mm -hmm. this year. For right. So just as a, as a public service, uh -huh. if you're a filmmaker here at the festival and you're from Buenos Aires or you're from Beijing or, or somewhere else and you think you maybe might be eligible for Academy membership, what, mm -hmm. do you, what do you need to do? Well, the first thing you should do is go to our website, mm -hmm. which is Oscars with an S, dot org. And um, each branch, we have 17 branches, and each branch uh, decides and puts together the requirement for membership inside of that branch. So you'll have directors looking at directors, screenwriters looking at screenwriters, mm -hmm. um, it, because that is the only way. You know, sure. they, they recognize and know what the talent is and mm -hmm. the work that's been done. So that's step number one, and looking at the requirements for the particular branch. 
And then um, I think you, there's a click here, usually, right? And you click there, and, you've, and you uh, follow the directions on how mm -hmm. to become a member. Hmm. OK. Um, in terms of the membership of the Academy and the efforts you're making to make it more diverse, more inclusive, uh, increase the numbers as well, what is the actual connection, do you think, between the diversity of your membership and the diversity of your nominees for the Oscars? Well, you know, voting is a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it is done online now, which is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, the, all the difference in the world. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. And so therefore, everybody's individual choice is very personal. Uh, there's, there, you cannot control that at all, nor should you. That is, that is, is uh, over 7,000 professionals who know exactly what they're looking for, which is why so often it differs from the public opinion, because the public opinion, which is perfect and wonderful, is about, I liked it, you know, mm -hmm. a, a story moved them in some sort of a way, which is exactly what our business is, mm -hmm. is to take you on some sort of a journey. Um, with academy voting, they're looking at a bit more, a deeper, a deeper concept because they know what it takes in order to direct and or for a cinematographer, for visual effects. They know, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a different level. So of, these are professionals mm -hmm. looking yeah. at the craft of the film exactly. uh, that they're, they're assessing. But they're also human beings, and mm -hmm. they've got biases, as all of us do. Yes. Um, they've got preferences, as all of us do. Yes. Uh, they have personal experiences and backgrounds and histories, as all of us do. And they're mm -hmm. bringing that to the voting process as well. Yes. Um, this has, I think, been one of the most volatile parts of this conversation, is the idea that the demographics of any particular voting group will determine the results. I know. Where do you stand on that? What do you think about that? I, I, I don't believe that that is necessarily true. I okay. really don't. What our goal is, is our membership. Okay. Um, inclusion in the membership, in the conversation, um, and in the governance. And that makes the difference. I mean, uh, we started out where our demographics are. 94% um, white, 77% male. Well, that's, in 2016, that's... Mm -hmm. Not very inclusive. And it's certainly so, not America. It, no, no, and it's not. And it's not the world. No. So therefore, in order for us to really be relevant and, and to be on, on top of the conversation, and certainly film is changing rapidly and growing and becoming diverse with regard to storytelling and processes in technology and in science. I mean, it's just grown exponentially, mm -hmm. I think, you know, in the last number of years. So um, that is really the goal. That is really the goal. And also, uh, because our members are involved in every facet of film production, marketing, and distribution, if our conversation is solid mm -hmm. inside of this organization, I look at it like a tree with branches as well as roots. Mm -hmm. So every member then is out in the world in their particular film and their area of expertise with this mindset of looking around and making sure that that inclusion is happening, that the message spreads. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's more than just changing the demographics of the Academy membership. Right. It's also about raising awareness about inclusion. Exactly generally. right. Exactly right. Because I do look at our members as ambassadors, mm -hmm. because they're out every single day. And uh, they're department heads mm -hmm. you know, on production. So maybe now we're going to think mm -hmm. about bringing in um, women in an area that maybe you hadn't before. Mm -hmm. Uh, or uh, international expertise. You know, you can find a, a tremendous sound executive, designer, sound designer that maybe lives somewhere else in the world and you, and you uh, have seen their, the movies that they've been involved in. You might think about putting them, you know, uh, on your production. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's how the conversation will spread and that um, inclusion can be, uh, you know, at every phase. <coughs> which will also include um, hiring and promoting. Hmm. 
there's so much in what you've just said that I want to kind of okay. uh, uh, go back to, but let me just focus on the international element for now. Mm -hmm. The Academy, of course, is an international organization, but based right. obviously in the, in the United States where the world's largest film industry is based. Um, Hollywood has always drawn on talent from all over the world, from the very beginnings of Hollywood, of Correct. course. People have come from Europe, from Asia, from, from many different places um, to, to ply their craft. Um, but do you, does your current membership still think of itself as primarily American? Are they going to be okay with the entire world's film industry actually, you know, participating in the way that that uh, that the American members do? Yes, they are okay. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they are because um, the criteria is still the same, right? Mm. The criteria for member ship is the same, doesn't matter where, where you are from. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, you know, it is at a, a certain bar right. that, that one must meet. Mm -hmm. And um, our vision and view is that the heart and soul of the motion picture business is in Hollywood, California. Mm -hmm. And that is um, <laughs> very much about okay. that. It, that's where it is. Um, however, you know, we reach out and, and um, want to recognize that talent everywhere, but the heart and soul of the motion picture business is in Hollywood, California. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you agree, though? <laughs> yeah, you kind of, maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think that maybe the only factor would be uh, China. Okay. <laughs> And, what, and in Which what way? Which is a, a hugely uh, a growing part of the international film industry as well. Not just in terms of the, the massive size of the audience, but uh, the, you know, the financing that's coming out of China now, the professionals who are there, the filmmakers, the producers, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So mm -hmm. uh, that obviously is an evolving picture, and we'll Absolutely. see where that goes. But, um, mm -hmm. but that may be the one, one big element. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You know, um, <laughs> I, you know... I, I, I think the exchange, whether it's China, whether it's um, uh, Rwanda, whether it's uh, South Korea, um, you know, at many parts of the world, I, I just think the exchanges will um, will occur, and and it'll make it all terrific and mm -hmm. great for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know, there'll still be and should be um, films made in countries that are very much about the culture of that country, do you know? Mm -hmm. um, that should never, ever go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are sort of what I call the big extravaganzas mm -hmm. that uh, pull in talent mm -hmm. from, from everywhere. Um, to go back to just the evolution of the, mm -hmm. of the membership and, and the, the goals that you have for 2020, um, what's been the reaction in terms of your members uh, embracing the change that's coming over the next few years, um, resisting, uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback do you get from your members? I actually get a lot of really good feedback. Mm -hmm. And there are those um, that um, str are struggling a bit with the change, mm -hmm. with changes, which happens, I think, with any kind of change. Um, that you're, you're getting used to something, I, I, even my, my son, I know, but it's true, you know, if, when he was younger, if I went in and changed anything in his room, he'd you know, have a heart attack for a day <laughs> or two uh, because he didn't like change, sure. you know, and some people just don't like change. Mm -hmm. um, but by and large, um, we've gotten great reception. Mm -hmm. and, and I think because the members are involved, I mean, this is, it's not like Cheryl, mm -hmm. you know, sits there and dictates, and certainly I have uh, the complete backing of the board. Um, and, 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 it's, and it's a board decision. It's not I'm going in there and saying, this has got to happen, this has got to happen. Um, we are a unit together mm -hmm. with regard to um, this issue and as many others mm -hmm. um, and in solidarity about it. Um, and peop I, I'm constantly, even here, I've, I've come across Academy members and some not Academy members mm -hmm. that have said, oh, I love what you guys are doing. It's really great. Um, do you know, really notice the difference? I think it has energized our membership quite a bit, um, which is a wonderful thing, you know, um, with regard to the conversation of inclusion as well as the conversation of the academy. 
Um, so I think that that, you know, that that has all benefited tremendously. Can you take us inside the walls of the academy a little bit in terms of those, those debates? Um, when you're talking to the board, uh, the heads of the branches, mm -hmm. and practically, what do they need to, to be aware of, to understand, to figure out before they can get on board with change, if change is coming? What, what kinds of conversations are actually um, helping to move you forward? Well, I would say the biggest is we all, all of us, mm -hmm. sort of live in our own bubble. We live in our own environment, whether at home and our friends and how we socialize. And certainly in this business, um, uh, making a movie is like a family, right? And you, you're you there and you're involved for months at a time all together. Uh, and then you have your time off, depending you know how long that is. Uh, and then you go to another group. So the big, the big issue uh, for me with our members is, is to have everybody sort of look up, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, get your peripheral vision out and look a little further than what your world is mm -hmm. because that really is what stops a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's not intentional. People do not sit around and say, I don't want that one or I don't want those. or I, it, 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 That sort of negativity is not there. Mm -hmm. It's more about the world that that you uh, function in. Just what you're used to. And it's just what you're used to. Sure. You know, it's like uh, filmmakers who hire the same members of their crew right. because they know that those people will deliver exactly what they need and want. They, they can them. go shorthand, you know, and that's what happens. You know, yeah. there's a lot, always conversation about in Hollywood, well, you can't get you can't get a, a good career, you can't get hired unless you know somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, in truth, that is a little bit of truth mm -hmm. um, because it is a, a fast-moving industry. There's a lot of money involved, and therefore, everybody wants, you know, they want it now, they want to get it done, they want professionalism. Mm -hmm. So you do tend to, to not um, look further than your own space, mm -hmm. okay? And we're asking everybody, to look further right, right now in every single way yeah. because then if you do and then you'll then it'll start becoming natural mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. at first it's a little dif more difficult you're spending more time thinking about it mm -hmm. and then i think at some point and hopefully very soon hmm. it, it won't be that conscious it's just how your brain is starting to work mm -hmm. now i only go to la maybe three, four times a year, tops. Mm -hmm. But even I frequently find myself uh, in meetings where I am the only mm -hmm. person of color. I'm okay. sure in your years in the industry, <laughs> before, even before you took on this job, there were many times mm -hmm. where you were the only woman or the only person of color in the room. Um, and those rooms are often where decisions get made. That's right. Um, how does that change? Having more uh, diverse viewpoints in the room? Yeah. Uh, that is that's that is a goal. <laughs> that is absolutely a goal. Um, it it has to be an effort. It has mm -hmm. to be an effort by by companies and and um, like I said, you know, our membership uh, includes studio executives, um, production executives, distributors, as well as directors and cinematographers and animators and visual. You know, all across all across the board. And if this conversation um, continues, then I, uh, people will notice it. And actually, we've seen this um, with a number of companies that realize that you know they look around the room and they're they're producing a, a movie, you know, that has men and women in it, and yet no one in the room. There's no women in mm -hmm. the room. It's mm -hmm. like, really, you know. <laughs> uh, I think that that. Um, that is being noticed more and more, and there is much more of a conscious effort, uh, as well as, in, and I notice it in casting quite a bit, huh. as well. What do you say to people who will say to you, Hollywood is a meritocracy. The people in the room are the best people for that particular decision, and that's just how it is. The best people rise to the top, and it just happens to look the way it does. I don't believe that, you see, <laughs> because if you're not thinking outside of your bubble, how do you know that that's the best? Do you know, you actually, you have to work at this, do you know? Um, 
and and there are there are so many wonderful movies um, that are coming out now that's showing you know not a lot of new talent, and I think that the more that we see talent that is more diverse, um, the more we recognize oh my goodness. <laughs> They're actually out there, um, and, um, and and we should look at that and hire, and certainly in the room because that that's where a lot of discussions are made. Um, in our branches, you know, each one of our branch branches has an executive committee, mm -hmm. right? And so we are committed to making sure that each one of these committees is diverse across the board, mm -hmm. uh, because that's where the decisions are made with regard to recognition um, uh, f for, for recognition of talent and, and, our, and our many different awards, not just Oscars, as well as membership. Mm -hmm. Because if that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. if you don't have um, a diverse group of people in a room making decisions, then it's always going to be pretty narrow. Mm -hmm. Now, there have been some individuals who've made um, concerted efforts and very visible efforts to uh, make their work in in Hollywood and the film industry more inclusive. Ava DuVernay, uh, of course, with Queen Sugar, mm -hmm. um, and hiring a crew of directors that were all, all women, women, and then yeah. a very di diverse mix of ethnicities as well. J.J. Right. Right. Um, Abrams, yes. uh, through his company and, and the work mm -hmm. that he's producing, mm -hmm. uh, and again, seeking out diversity right. um, quite deliberately. That's right. Um, what do you think of that, and uh, is, that, is that a part of what you need to see happen to, to actually change what happens at the Academy? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and, and they're all members that you're talking about, okay. you see. So, yeah. that, so you're, you know, we're, that's how we're seeing the, the progress. Um, and they don't, you don't have to be an Academy member for this mm. to happen by any means, but certainly with Ava and JJ, Plan B mm -hmm. has been tremendous about it. Ryan Murphy, um, his production company, um, are all on, you know, really looking at their staffing, their hiring, and the more that happens and the more we see it, the more the conversation grows and it becomes more than a conversation. Mm -hmm. It actually becomes action mm -hmm. because we can all talk, 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 and nothing happens, and we've seen this. We've mm -hmm. seen this for many years. That's why we're all very proud. I'm very proud of our, our class this year. Our, our new members this year, mm -hmm. that, it's, that it was such a, um, a solid number mm -hmm. and representing a diversity of age. I mean, you know, our oldest new member, I think, is 90, 91. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not about age mm -hmm. at all. It's about your activities, your skills, your involvement with the industry. Mm -hmm. So there are, speaking of age, there are some members who have said, you know, you're trying to push me out the door because mm -hmm. I've reached a certain age and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that this is in fact ageist, uh, mm -hmm. your, your uh, mm -hmm. push for a greater inclusion. What, what do you say to that? Well, I, first of all, I just don't understand it. It's, 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 I maybe would understand it if we said something like, our membership is at 7,000, we want to keep it at 7,000, we want to bring in new members, therefore we have to move people out. And that's not the point. I mean, that's never been, I, I, you know, that's been a frustrating thing for me, mm. is this, this concept of we're moving people out in order to move people in. Mm -hmm. That is not true. It's not happening. Not even. Um, I wanted to ask you, when uh, the Oscar So White hashtag first surfaced, it was actually over a year ago, it wasn't just for this year's no. Academy Awards season, um, mm -hmm. it was for the previous as well, but it was started by a woman named April Rain on mm -hmm. Twitter. Uh, I'm curious about two things. She's an African-American woman, as are you. What did that feel like to be kind of pitted against each other in a way? I never really looked at it as being pitted against each other. Um, uh, April was pointing out a truth, actually, mm -hmm. right? Um, that out of uh, the the um, acting categories, that there was there was no diversity, mm -hmm. uh, people of color, obviously, because there were women. But it's always curious to me, you know, the the different uh, and other award shows. Nobody talks about them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they only talk about us. Mm -hmm. um, but that's okay, I guess. Um, and. Uh, so, you know, you can't quibble with that it was true. Mm -hmm. um, 
Have you had an opportunity to, to speak with April? No, I have not. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. The other piece of that question I wanted to, to ask about was social media, mm -hmm. because obviously Ooh. this has blown up on social media, and social media has amplified so many of these debates and, um, and made them very volatile very quickly. That's just the nature of how things work on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that element of it has changed what you do and how you have to respond now? Well, I think, uh, you know, social media is a whole thing that is, is it's quite fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. um, Are you on Twitter yourself? No, I, I have nothing <laughs> to do with it. <laughs> I have enough to try and answer the emails that right. come in. Um, uh, it, it's, it's just such a different mindset that it, it, it's actually quite fascinating. Um, communication, sort of one, one on one, I, I, it's, it's, it's a different world. Um, but its impact is there. And, um, and certainly, uh, there is a conversation that happens that really can get heated and, mm -hmm. and personal opinion. Um, what we have to stay focused on, however, is our goals. Mm -hmm. And we believe that our goals are good. Uh, they're solid. We're going to work constantly, not just up to, a, up to 2020, but beyond. Mm -hmm. But you know, certainly, you have to do um, a limit so that there's a goal so it doesn't just seem like it's sort of fading into and the I future. Know you haven't named a kind of an overall goal beyond 2020, but what are you thinking? I mean, because the population of America continues to evolve. It's going to become significant, significantly Hispanic. Mm -hmm. uh, it already is, but That's it'll right. become more so. Uh, California, where Hollywood is, is mm -hmm. rooted and has been uh, mm -hmm. forever, is, um, is becoming more and more Asian American as well. Um, so beyond the kind of the black-white debate, uh, it's Absolutely. a very complex world, and, and the United States, North America, the globe as a whole, um, is shifting to a much more diverse population. Is the Academy's overall goal beyond 2020 to, to reflect more of what America is, more of what the world is? Uh, it's really uh, set to reflect the talent more than that. I mean, okay. it's 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 like saying, let's say, Pulitzer Prize or Nobel Prize or, or even the Olympics. Mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't look at the Olympics and go, well, you know, this might be the best team, mm -hmm. but it's not diverse, so therefore we need to switch you know, people out. You know, um, or, uh, so we're really looking at talent. Mm -hmm. And how it's going to be diverse is allowing diversity and, and talent of diversity to be part of the discussion and, and part of the process, therefore recognition, mm -hmm. do you know? Um, if that, that's how that has to happen. It isn't, well, um, American population is, uh, I think it's 13% African American, therefore 13% of our nominees need to be African American. No, mm -hmm. but at the same token, um, with membership, abs you know, that, that if there is, uh, you know, and I don't know what, what the numbers would be, but um, of active mm -hmm. uh, members of the industry, uh, let's say are African American, then at that it's 20%, right. then we let in 20%. We wouldn't keep it back either. Mm -hmm. It really, it, and certainly with um, the proliferation of film schools, I, I'm just convinced that there isn't a school in the United States that doesn't have a film department mm -hmm. these days. So um, we're going to see that grow more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So th that question of, of talent, I think, is a, a really important one. And, and I completely agree that just reflecting the overall demographics of a particular yes. region is, is not mm -mm. Uh, necessarily the, the way to go. But um, talent is... A, also about opportunity. That's right. As I think it was Viola Davis who, who very uh, famously said, it's about the opportunities that are, that are given exactly right. to actors like her. So to get to the level where you can actually become a, an Academy member uh, is partly about your innate talent, but partly about the opportunities you're given. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen to give more a more diverse mix of people those opportunities? Is it film schools? Is it training agencies? Where do you see those different steps? Actually, all of the above, okay. um, all of those. And and the big thing to me is about um, is about promotion. You hire, and then you 
promote. I mean, I was lucky enough to have um, bosses that saw something in me, mm -hmm. so helped pull me through um, uh, and, and recognize my own personal talent. And that's what everybody has to do. You know, it's not just about um, hiring to hit some sort of a goal, you know, the different companies, and then stagnate. No, you've got to pull everybody through so that the, the, the decision makers um, represent a more diverse uh, um, arena, you know, for men, uh, for people of color as well as females. And so that um, that conversation in that room is more diverse when they're hiring, when they're promoting, when there is a job you know, that's available, let's say at a studio, that they actually look around and say, oh, let's promote this person. You know? um, a lot of it has to do with that, mm -hmm. I believe, because then you get the opportunity to work, um, say, on movies, yeah. that you get enough that you can meet the criteria for membership. But if that doesn't happen, there's that, there's that gap. So it's not. It's so the the process is from it's, it's straight through. Mm -hmm. It's from hiring into promoting into encouraging into especially hiring. Mm -hmm. You know. So if if um, you know, just trying to think of something. You know, mm -hmm. if you you have to work on five or six movies right. um, in order to meet a criteria for a branch, mm -hmm. that. Um, that there are people out there making mm -hmm. sure that you're getting the you're opportunities, get so therefore um, you can meet the goal to become a member. What were the turning points, if you look back on your own career, mm -hmm. how did you kind of get through those doors to, to, to get to where you are now? Who, who was it who helped? What did you have to do to kind of get to that next level each time? So much of it is timing, mm -hmm. um, and certainly as you climb the ladder, as I say, you know, uh, then a lot of it has to do with, with timing things that in some ways are almost out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I was lucky enough to have um, mentors through uh, my career. And I was told early on when I first started that um, getting into this business meant that I was turning over my life to the company. Hmm. Um, that, and which was, was great, actually, you know, to know that. Um, and, and do whatever you were asked to do. Period. Mm -hmm. Whatever Period. it takes. Period. Exactly right. Huh. And um, and so don't schedule the big weekends. You know you're going to go away with your you know girlfriend to Vegas or whatever, <laughs> because you might have to work, yeah. and and to be available because that's what everybody looks for, is is your availability that you're there because things are moving very quickly, mm -hmm. right? And certainly in the very beginning, so that when they look up and you're there, mm -hmm. then they. You do this, and then you do it well, and yeah. then before you know it, you just kind of slowly. Are there any up. moments when you think back and you think, I did it well in that moment, and that's what got me to the next level? Anything where you feel like you really proved yourself? Yes, yes, but sometimes you do that, and it still doesn't work out. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you, then you get angry. <laughs> but you can't stay angry too long. Right. People don't like angry. That's no, true. They really don't like angry. Mm -hmm. If they think you're angry, then they don't want to have anything to do with you. So you walk around the lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, now that you are in this position and you do have a lot of influence and a lot of um, ability to, to make some change, who are your biggest allies? Who's kind of standing with you here? Well, certainly the board. Okay. I mean, really, I have a tremendous support on the board, mm -hmm. um, and and they are very, very much geared to getting, to moving this forward and getting it done. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very, very helpful. And I'm finding, you know, sort of out in, in the world, and certainly even here, mm -hmm. um, where members have come up or members have stopped me in the market, <laughs> <laughs> in Home Depot. Um, really? Yeah, like at oh. eight o'clock in the morning. Um, really interesting, um, and saying um, really wonderful things mm -hmm. about what we're doing. And that, that really feels good. Mm -hmm. And then you also know that people are really talking about it, right. that you're not even aware of, which is what you want. I mean, once the barn door opens and everything is flat, you want that message to be right and correct. Huh. So that, because you don't know where it, all of the conversations are happening, right? right? 
Do you find that uh, any part of this is exhausting? Exhausting? Yes. <laughs> yes, what absolutely. Um, when everybody's working so hard uh, um, to do the right thing, and, um, and then you'll hear or read um, <laughs> somewhere <laughs> that, uh, that there's some sort of calculated thought process, which is not true. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that makes you like, oh. <laughs> yeah. really, sure. you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, come on, you know, this is, this is all positive and all mm -hmm. trying to move forward. So I, I, I don't understand that, but you know, you get angry again, but for mm -hmm. a short period of time, and then you know, you move on. Mm -hmm. Um, and in those conversations in the market, in the Home Depot, um, do you find that you're having to kind of educate in a way, or is it a matter of just listening, or what, what's the actual work of those well, conversations? Well, those, no, those encounters are all good, you know, okay. really, you know, even, even from non-members. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one time in the market, a, a gentleman who worked crew um, in production, and he was Latino. And he was, he, he was very complimentary, and he said, it's really great, and I've already noticed a really di a difference on the set mm -hmm. with how everybody kind of talks to each other and communicates. And, you know, I really want to thank you for the efforts that you guys are doing mm -hmm. because it's, you know, floating everywhere, and that's what's important, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. You know, but it is, but I do have other conversations um, with members um, that, that m white male in particular, I would say, um, because they don't live in the world of being a female or a person of color. And so they're maybe just slightly confused about, are they doing, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just a little bit about, um, I hadn't really thought of inclusion or non-inclusion um, at all. And now I'm really thinking about it. And um, I think that you know, it's certainly the very beginning. Um, we are picking the very best. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not sure of that, you know, <laughs> because again, you're living in your world. Right. Do you know about, and I would, you know, name this person or that, do you know about this person? You know, do you know about that person? Mm -hmm. You know, well, they have really great uh, credits and have made terrific movies. Have you ever seen this movie or that movie? No. no. And so you go, well, then are you sure? You know, rethink that thought now that we really are bringing in the most talented if there are a number of people we just mentioned mm -hmm. that meet the criteria that you don't know. Hmm. Interesting. And so that, and then, and I see a little spark in the eye. I really mm -hmm. do. Um, that go, oh, hmm. because they really hadn't thought of it. it yeah. Again, it's not sitting around saying, I don't want. It's not from a negative space. It's just the world that you live in. And you have to just try to expand that. We all do, I think, We all do. It's, an, it's sort of natural. One of the, the kind of the case studies for me in this past round of uh, Academy Awards was the film Creed, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Coogler's film, mm -hmm. because I, I was quite moved by that film. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was a case study for me because it was both um, an African-American film in many ways by black director, majority black cast, but it was also a continuation of a much loved series, the Rocky series. And I can imagine as I was watching it that I'm seeing things in the relationship um, you know, between Michael B. Jordan and, uh, uh, and, uh, and Tessa in the film that, that really speak to me uh, in terms of just black love on screen. That's but right. then somebody else is watching Sly Stallone's performance and that connecting that to the long history mm -hmm. they have with him since the original Rocky in 1976. Mm -hmm. And that's a different emotional reaction. That's right. You can watch the same movie and get completely different things out of it based on where you're coming from. Um, and I imagine that that has got to feed into how people decide on the quality of a film and what is best. But you know, that's what movies are. I mm -hmm. mean, we all sit in a darkened room like this, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of hundred people all together, and we're all looking at the same movie, mm -hmm. but we take away something different personally, mm -hmm. right? You're going to look, you know, you walk out of movies with friends of yours and, I really like that. Wasn't it really great? Eh, not yeah, so much. Yeah. Um, didn't you like da 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 da? Nah. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, that's just with two people. Mm -hmm. Do you know? People look at something different. And certainly with Creed, um, 
the Stallone story, which, you know, thread, which I think is why there was so much discussion about the movie, because that is what everybody knew. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly a generational, too, right? So um, a 20-something's parents saw the original Rockies. So now they're, they're bringing something different mm -hmm. um, uh, to that experience and why maybe they wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. now, but then they go and they see it, and they see such tremendous work out of Michael B., mm -hmm. and certainly out of Ryan yeah. Coogler, who yeah. is just phenomenal mm -hmm. young director. Um, and so what that does is people will look at it and go, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. right? Which they might not have before and look at this talent and the fact that Ryan was able uh, so successfully to connect this line leading back to 1976 of Rocky. So it really wasn't, ev it wasn't a change, it was an evolution. Yeah. It was, you know, in uh, keeping that spirit of, of Rocky alive mm -hmm. and watching him, Rocky, mm -hmm. the character, with new characters. Mm -hmm. I thought it was quite, mm -hmm. quite good. Um, one of the things I love about L.A. when I do go there and talk to some people in the film industry is that some people have such a strong sense of the history mm -hmm. of Hollywood and mm -hmm. their role in it today. Mm -hmm. So we know, for instance, that Hollywood was largely created by Jewish immigrants That's right. to America That's right. who really invented what that glory and that fantasy of the Hollywood movie was, the Hollywood spectacle. Um, and there, were, there have been many books written about this, about what that meant to kind of come from Europe, um, to bring everything that you brought as an outsider, as an immigrant to America, and then create the American dream uh, on the silver screen. And then, of course, we saw, speaking of Stallone, we saw in the 1960s people like Dustin Hoffman and Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and a new generation of mm -hmm. Italian immigrants, That's Stallone right. and others, come up and then reinvent what a leading man could be. That's right. You know, who didn't have to be Gary Cooper anymore. Do you know what I mean? So exactly. there have been all of these waves of diversity that have created Hollywood history. Mm -hmm. What do you think this next wave is gonna give us in terms of that, you know, the next wave of, 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 of diversity, of, of kind of expanding what Hollywood offers? Um, with, certainly with regard to gender and race, um, I think that we're gonna see, I hope, um, <laughs> uh, more women, uh, uh, lead actors, lead, female lead actors, um, that maybe one would not have thought um, would lead a, a certain movie. I mean, the one, my brain is like flipping around here, but one that always uh, comes to mind, I was talking about this uh, with, with some women yesterday, is Sigourney Weaver in Alien. Do you know? Mm -hmm. um, that was major. That yes. was major. Was. Do you know? Mm -hmm. And, and yet, when you watch the movie, did it matter? Mm -hmm. Not really. It's just the fact that uh, it mattered in the sense that there was this, a strong female, but why can't there be, right? Why can't there be? So um, uh, we want to see more of that, and I think we will, you know, that women, um, and hopefully we'll also see that uh, with relationships, that the man isn't one age and the wife is 30 years younger. <laughs> um, You're really asking for a lot, Cheryl. You know, that maybe that you know, makes a little bit more sense here. Uh -huh. um, and, 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 and developing certainly female roles as, as being not one-dimensional, one mm -hmm. you know, that they're full-out characters. I mean, there's so many incredible mm -hmm. female character actors mm. and whenever we think of character actors we only think of men mm. and there are a lot of tremendous tremendous uh, female yeah. actors who are um, who are characters yeah. do you know who are characters yeah, many. Melissa Leo who's in um, yeah. Snowden here yeah. uh, is, is one of many she is um, we've not. talked a lot about uh, gender a lot about ethnicity in terms mm -hmm. of diversity we haven't talked about sexuality or gender identity mm -hmm. uh, that's becoming I think more and more yes. um, of, uh, a, 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 a visible present conversation and obviously um, gay people have had a huge role in shaping Hollywood as Correct. well. Right. Um, for you, what is that piece of the inclusion conversation? Well, it's, it's been there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think where, where um, it, it, 
can grow mm -hmm. is visually. So that means on the screen. Yeah. Um, and that has to do with um, sexuality. It also has to do with um, special needs. Mm -hmm. Do you know, um, why not, you know, hire, um, say, someone who is in a wheelchair um, to play a character in a movie, um, you know, so that you see more of, of real life, mm -hmm. you know, across the board. Um, we spend a lot of time in filmmaking of, of being real, <laughs> reality <laughs> film. Authenticity. Uh, yeah, authenticity and mm -hmm. traveling around the world to get the locations. We'll get the people as well, mm -hmm. do you know? Um, and they represent across the board. They represent uh, uh, certainly d uh, diversity with gender and um, transgender um, actors or, you know, that are in the movie as well as um, uh, people who have um, some sort of uh, disability that maybe they're in a wheelchair, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. do you know, that, it, that, that can certainly broaden out and make um, the casting more realistic, mm -hmm. you know? Even you know, when you see scenes in, in metropolitan areas, you know, in movies, and, you, and it, you know, you, you've all seen the shot where you can see down a block, yeah. and everybody on the block is white, mainly male, occasionally you'll see a few females, mm -hmm. and, and, but that's not what it normally looks like in the metropolis, right? right? You know, it's that's a lot more casting. diverse, yes, right? Exactly. It's background, I mean, so why not, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Someone, you know, who has, you know, a seeing eye dot, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's real. So why don't we get real? Mm -hmm. Cheryl, I like that idea of getting real. I think that's the best place to, to end. Thank you so much for the conversation this morning okay. and all Thank the you work Cameron. you're doing as well. You. Cheryl Boone Isaacs, Thank you. Thank you. So we're up and out, right? Thank you so much, Cameron and Cheryl. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join us for the next session at 11 o'clock, Women at the Helm, where we discuss